Ladies and gentlemen, Raila Amolo Odinga and Martha Karwa today addressed the media just a few hours after Juliana Cherera resigned from office. I paid very close attention to that address. And for the first time, I think Raila Odinga and Martha Karwa and the entire Azimio Brigades are coming up with the real issues which Kenyans really want to hear. I want you guys to pay very close attention to the speeches, especially the one by Martha Karwa and Raila Amolo Odinga. And uh, then tomorrow probably we are going to do a critical analysis. But I noted two or three things. The presence of David Murabe is significant in that meeting because it shows the presence of Uru Mugai Kenyatta. Jeremy Kioni was also present, which means Jubilee will be part of the whole thing. Kanu sent apology and uh, Kalonzo Musyoka also sent apology. So listen in to Martha Karwa and Raila Molodinga. Then tomorrow we are going to do a critical analysis of this particular speech, which in my view is the best so far. Public consultative forum. The right to public protest. The right to demonstrate are enshrined in the constitution. But the Kamukunji meeting is a consultative meeting and we want to make it very clear that the rights granted by our constitution cannot be derogated by anyone, not the courts and not any other authority and must be respected. The meeting will be a coming together of Kenyans to share views on the state of affairs in the country. The meeting is in line with Article 37 of the Constitution on the right to assemble, right to demonstrate, picket, and to petition. Under this article, every person has the right to peaceably and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and present petitions to public authorities. This is what we will be doing on the 7th. We will be assembling as granted by the Constitution, peacefully, in an orderly man manner, and we have appealed to those attending our meeting to be orderly and peaceful. We are dismayed that those in authority are trying to paint a horror movie. Some of them have even hoped that there will be no deaths. A clear indication that they are the ones planning mayhem. We have just come from campaigns that were so peaceful, there were no serious ugly incidents throughout the country. Where on earth would they get the idea that a public meeting will be unruly? We want to warn anybody bent on trying to disorganize and create mayhem at our meeting to be warned. And for those in charge of the security agencies to do their duty to ensure that they keep peace at our meeting as provided by the Constitution and the law. Our public consultations will be about the poor IBC commissioners who have been subjected to gross injustices and forced to resign. The consultations are also about other pressing national issues. On the IABC, we note it is being cannibalized, the consequences of which shall be grim. We are gathering to discuss this state of affairs and to remind those in authority that all legislation relating to elections in this country is normally negotiated. The law they are trying to amend was negotiated in 2017. Similarly, all laws relating to elections and to IABC must be negotiated and we shall not tolerate skewed legislation, partisan legislation, trying to introduce a William Ruto Electoral Commission, not even a Kenya Kwanzaa, a William Ruto Electoral Commission. 
the Electoral Commission must be for all Kenyans, not to serve an individual or a faction. An area of grim concern to us, which we intend to deliberate on, is the cannibalization and politicization of the public service, the skewed appointments which we have noticed, and we regard the public service as the foundation of our nation. Nations begin to fail when the civil service fails. We are concerned that the fairly functional public service of Kenya, and which our nation has struggled to build over the years, is being turned upside down by the UDA regime. Civil servants who have painstakingly built careers in public service have been overlooked and bypassed by the Ruto regime and now being made to answer to failed politicians, crooked businessmen and mercenary activists who have no experience whatsoever in the functioning of civil service and of government. That is what has happened with the appointments partly of cabinet and of principal secretaries. As if the appointments of failed politicians, crooked businessmen, and mercenary activists to run ministries is not bad enough, the appointments have been extremely skilled against other regions. We are seeing a massive return of nepotism, tribalism, and favoritism in the public service. These have long demoralized so many officers who have then become mere hostages to a system they believe does not appreciate them. The regime change in 2002 and subsequent regimes strived to professionalize the public service and by and large allowed career civil servants to be in charge. Now, Ruto has turned that upside down. The result is going to be a host of frustrated officers who stay, who stay on just to secure pension and who turn to other ways to supplement income. We have always as a nation given our civil servants the assurance that if they ha work hard, maintain a clean record, exercise discipline, nothing will stand between them and rising to the top. Ruto has betrayed them. When a failed politician or mercenary or party activist is suddenly imposed on senior civil servants, like directors and senior assistant secretaries who are looking forward to advancing their careers in public service, we cannot expect such officers to continue being committed to their jobs and to give our nation their all. We want our public service to attract and retain men and women of quality. Public service must have the face of Kenya. It can't be two or ten communities. It must reflect the face of Kenya, which is 47 communities. What we have today is unprofessional, skilled, and unacceptable. We want to start a robust conversation on the introduction of genetically modified foods and seeds in our country. We have a responsibility to educate our people about the ill effects of GMO and the corrupt motivations of those trying to introduce them here. Introduction of GMO will turn our farmers into slaves who will not be able to plant without buying from a select number of companies. On the 12th of December, at Jacaranda Gardens, we will have our own celebrations of our independence and our republic. This is the Republic of Kenya, not the Republic of an individual or a regime. Our celebrations will therefore be at the Jacaranda Gardens. Ruto and his deputy have a very narrow view of the Republic of Kenya. They do not know where Kenya has come from. They do not know where they want to take it. Ours will be a celebration of patriots. Those who don't like to hear that word, itakuwa ni mkutano wa wazalendo wa Kenya. It will be 
Jamhuri ya Wazalendo, men and women who have made sacrifices for this country and who know where the country is supposed to go. We are concerned about the very brazen attack on Chapter 6 of our Constitution, brazen because the accused are being appointed to critical public offices that have immense bearing on whether we grow or stagnate as a country. We are seeing a pattern where people facing serious criminal cases like money laundering, fraud, giving kickbacks. Such people are being appointed to critical positions, including leadership of the very institutions that have taken them to court. Ruto is slowly imposing a mafia state on Kenya. This reign by gangsters is scary and unnerving. It has never been seen in Kenya even during our past bad days. It has been said jokingly in the past, whereas other countries have a mafia, in Kenya, mafia have a country. This is now officially true. It is clear that despite the outrage of the people of Kenya over the criminal backgrounds of most of the people being appointed to critical public service positions and to government, between the appointees and the president, they are as thick as thieves. Thank you. End of the uh, that's the end of the statement. Sasa uh, Abadiano. Now the most important thing we are trying to pass a message is that Kenyans should not sit back and watch as the country goes down to the dogs. These so-called new kids on the block have been in government. There's nothing new. In fact, they're just reinstating those old bad days and we are cautioning Kenyans and alerting them that the era of dictatorship is back with us and that Kenyans should not sit back and allow these people that comfort of thinking that they can subdue all of us. We will not let that happen. And we are going to engage them because that is what is right for this country. Asante Nisana. I just want to add here there has been an allegation in the media that Azimio Mizanbaratika, as you can see here, Honorable Mother Karua represents Na Kenya. Honorable David Murade here and Jeremiah Kioni here represent Jubilee. And Honorable Robert uh, Mbui here represent uh, Wiper Party. Because Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, the Wiper leader, is in Mwingi for, on some business. Honorable Gideon Moy of Kanu has also sent just apologies. So you need to know that Azimio is very much united here. And we just want to reiterate again what Martha has told you, that we are acting in the best interest of the members of Azimio, and that the meeting on Wednesday at Kamukunji Grounds is a peaceful public consultative meeting. It is not a demonstration or picketing. It is just a consultative meeting with the people of Kenya. And on the 12th of December, Jamhuri Day, we are going to Jacaranda uh, Garden in Embakazi, not Kamkoji. Again, that is just going to be celebrating Jamhuri Day with Wazalendo wa Kenya. And it's also going to be a very peaceful uh, uh, congregation. Not protest, not picketing. No, not at all, but all that also is also guaranteed by the Constitution of Kenya. If you wanted to do a protest demonstration, you would just inform the police, provide security, and we'll do it. But we are not demonstrating, 
We are not going to engage in any act of thuggery or hooliganism, and no property is going to be destroyed. We urge the government not to use this use an excuse to bring thugs there to try to disrupt this function. Thank you. You surely do not expect our leader to be responding to everybody who says something unfounded. You better go back to that source to give you factual, facts to show that what he is saying is true. We have already said they are being coerced. Remember, commissioners represent the people. Anybody given public office represents the people. What we can see is coercion, and we can see the end game. William Ruto wants a William Ruto commission. This is what we must resist. The final one. Since when did competition become the senior advisor or a cheerleader? Let us be serious and let people do whatever they feel befits them in the position they stand. We reject unsolicited advice.